Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. This is James and in this video, let's talk about immunity. Could scientists or something natural be 100% effective like a virus? Different things. We'll talk about different things in the video. And I know a lot of you guys know this stuff already because you've made comments on various videos on my channel that you do know this and there should be a 0.1%, if anything, if not more, of people immune out there, even to the zombie virus and the walking dead should be if we look at the data, the scientific information. Because yeah, in theory, scientists could engineer a virus that is extremely contagious and lethal, potentially affecting nearly everyone on earth. However, making it 100% effective where every single person is guaranteed to be infected and affected is virtually impossible in practice. Let's dive into it. So it's biological diversity that makes 100% infection unlikely. There's genetic variability among humans, and it means some individuals may have neutral resistance or immunity to a given virus. Even with engineered viruses like gain of function modifications, random genetic mutations or pre-existing immunity from similar pathogens could protect a tiny percentage of people. There's also immune system outliers. Some individuals have unusual immune responses. For example, certain people are immune to HIV due to a CCR5 gene mutation. The same could happen with any novel virus. A handful might resist or clear the infection, even if it's designed to be overwhelming. There's also logistical and environmental constraints. There's geographic isolation, remote tribes, underground shelters. Means not everyone would be exposed depending on what it is. Of course, the virus needs to be airborne, needs to be highly stable, and have a long incubation period to reach everyone before immunity or countermeasures arise. And yeah, the virus could mutate rapidly, like RNA viruses do. It may become less virulent or less effective over time. If it mutates too slowly, immune systems may catch up, or vaccines could be developed quickly. And we also have the ethical and practical limits of engineering. Scientists cannot account for every biological edge case. Even biological weapons programs, past or theoretical, have struggled to create universally fatal or infectious agents due to these complexities. So the simple answer, the bottom line, a 99.9% .9 infection or mortality rate is possible in theory, but 100% is essentially unachievable due to human genetic diversity, immune system variation, and environmental factors. There will almost always be a handful of people, either through luck, genetics, or circumstance, who are immune, resistant, or simply never are exposed. So this is a good sign for humanity as far as can we survive some pretty bad stuff. It does look like we possibly can. And of course it makes a great plot element for those writing stories. Because we do see this in a lot of different things. So then we move on to something, okay, what if it's not a virus? What is what if it's cordyceps, you know, a fungus apocalypse or some type of nature apocalypse? Um it's terrifying, fascinating, you know, to think about a it's a twist on the typical zombie outbreak because it's based on the real life fungus that infects and controls insect behavior. But even in that world, it's still not 100% infection for all humans. And here's why. Okay. Ellie is immune in the last of us game and TV show, but that was for a weird circumstance. The mom was bitten right before the baby was born. So that's a very rare natural, I guess you could say type of immunity that happened. So her exact circumstance would be a single circumstance or incredibly rare. But some people in remote or protected locations survive simply by avoiding exposure. That's not immunity. It's avoiding exposure. Cordyceps, of course, is fungal, not viral. Fungal spores behave differently from viruses. They spread well in damp and closed environments, but are more vulnerable to sunlight, dryness, and antifungal agents. That means environmental factors could shield some regions or people from infection altogether. Remote islands, underground facilities, less traveled parts of the world might possibly never get exposed even to airborne spores. People with airtight shelters, gas masks, or in areas where spores 
can't survive would likely never get infected. And even with a mutated cordyceps fungus, human immune systems vary too widely. Some people might have skin microbiomes or genetic traits that block the infection process. There's always biological outliers making 100% infection biologically implausible. So with the cordyceps, with some type of fungus, natural thing that's not a virus, the bottom line is even with something as aggressively evolved and terrifying as the cordyceps in that game, The Last of Us, a true 100% infection rate across the human species is still unrealistic. Hey, would a bad virus or a bad cordyceps outbreak something destroy civilization as we know it? Yeah, it does seem like that is very, very possible. But due to genetics, geography, or sheer luck, some people would always survive or be immune. So what could be a 100% something that, that could wipe out humanity? A virus engineered to target a specific gene found in 100% of humans. Example, a gene essential to cell metabolism or brain function could be universally lethal. So it's not a specific virus or a cordyceps type thing. It's actually an engineered virus or, or something that is targeting a specific gene. But even then, rare mutations or anomalies might result in a few resistant individuals. It's, it's just crazy how resistant humans can be, you know, when you break it down, even if it's just a handful of people. Then we've got the gray goo or nanobot scenario, self-replicating nanobots programmed to destroy all organic matter or target only human DNA. Those things could hypothetically eliminate every human being. And would it be made by some bad person on Earth? Would they come from aliens? You know, I don't know. It just seems like there's still a human behind it saying, hey, build these nanobots, make them do this. So if you had nanobots, they were airborne and capable of replicating fast enough, no biological immunity would matter. And this crosses into more of a technological apocalypse than a biological one. Someone could create some type of oxygen-blocking gas or planetary poison that binds irreversibly to hemoglobin, for example. That could, in theory, kill all oxygen-breathing humans and other things. Um, it would depend on global saturation, weather patterns, gas stability, still unlikely to hit 100% due to deep sea submarines, sealed bunkers, people with advanced filtration. And one type of apocalypse that's a buzzword right now because of the advancements in AI, AI kills us. It's an AI controlled pathogen or something, a rogue AI, it sends out pathogens and drones and other things to try to kill every human that could approach 100 percent it would require near total global surveillance flawless coordination um, that's something humans haven't achieved but ai possibly could a lot of ai fiction stories uh, love this aspect so the big question comes why is 100 percent so hard Genetic anomalies. Someone's always going to have a mutation or unexpected resistance. Geographical isolation. you got the remote tribes, deep bunkers, space habitats, and you've got just chance. Pure statistical randomness often prevents complete saturation. And you've got mutation. Even a perfectly engineered virus might mutate to be less effective as it spreads. So it does look like a true 100% infection or death rate is only possible in fiction involving total control like AI or nanotech or a planetary scale environmental collapse. In the real world, even the deadliest viruses, natural or engineered, run into biological, environmental, or logistical limits that leave a few survivors. So if you do plan on writing a story and want 100%, You'll need non-biological methods or a godlike entity ensuring there are no exceptions. Otherwise, that tiny 0.1% will always be humanity's thread of hope. And it is a pretty good storytelling tool. And of course, there's a lot of other things out there that threaten us. There could be an asteroid impact, a supervolcano eruption. It still doesn't seem like um, it would kill us all, but possibly could be civilization ending. Yeah, there's nuclear war global thermonuclear exchange, you've got engineered viruses, bioweapons, 
you got a gamma ray burst that could come from space and we wouldn't we wouldn't even see it coming it could, could just kill us just like that of course artificial intelligence nanotechnology you've got alien contact could be malevolent or indifferent and if the simulation theory we're all just living in a simulation they could just turn it off pull the plug but a lot of crazy ways to look at it and think about it and theories and ideas and all kinds of things mixed into that 0.1% talk. So it does look like no matter what it is, and it would take something pretty daggum amazing to wipe us all out, to kill us all. So give it up for humans. We are fairly resistant. But hey, you guys let me know what you think about it all, of course. A lot of information, but let me know what you think down in the comments below. And you know I'll join you there. This is James, and as always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more dead stuff.